Hey, what's up? It's your boy, 24-7 here with 24-7 Fusion Media. And right now, it looks like there's this big push of a lot of superhero content that's going to be going through HBO Max. And what this says is, Batgirl and Static Shock films may move to HBO Max. No sequels planned for Zack Snyder's Justice League. And, you know, I've heard that a few times, but, you know, you never can believe that they don't have something set up to where if the Justice League is a success, you don't think that they'd want to, you don't think that they'd want to get their 70 million that they have put into it. And everything else out of it along with marketing and, and everything else that comes with it. If this thing becomes a success. Then they're going to want to capitalize on that success. Either come with a sequel or let some of these characters have their own series. Or let alone their uh, their own movie. Depending on how popular or, or how good this is received by the public. So... We'll see. Says, over the weekend, Warner Media took a major step in its plans to make HBO Max a legit contender to Netflix by releasing one of its biggest films of the year, Wonder Woman 1984, on the streaming service. Not only did this set up, not only did this set a precedent of releasing a potentially billion dollar blockbuster on HBO Max at the same time as theaters, but it also showed that Warner Media is willing to release some of its superhero properties directly on a streaming service instead of worrying about a traditional release. Apparently, this is something Warner Media is likely going to continue to do in the future. Hmm. Well, I mean, they could continue to do that. The, the whole thing with this is that Wonder Woman is already being deemed as a, as a flop or failure. Everybody that I've seen for the most part, do not like the movie. They said they would, you know, they'd watch it that one time. They said it's not even worthy of a of a rewatch. Some people say that, yeah, it's a okay, cheesy popcorn f flick that you watch one time for two and a half hours. A lot of people felt like, you know, it was drawn out too long. And actually, I plan to see it here shortly in the next few hours. So I'm going to find out for myself with my own eyes. All right. According to the New York Times profile of DC Films' Walter Hamada, some of the biggest superhero films of the next several years are likely headed towards HBO Max instead of theaters, pumping, pumping up the demand for HBO Max while also using the platform to expand some of the franchises in new ways. But how will Warner Media figure out which of the DC superhero films are destined for the streaming fate and which will get full theatrical releases? Well, it appears it's going to come down to cost. Wow. You know, it's, it's crazy. If I'm not mistaken, I heard Wonder Woman took 200 million to make and I could be wrong but if I'm not mistaken worldwide it projected 38.4 million boy 200 to make and you only got back 38.4 million you know it's probably a little higher now the last time I checked was maybe a day or two ago but yeah 38.4 million out of a 200, 200 million uh, budget to make the movie. Oh, man. All right. Now, what it says here is that the most expensive DC movies up to four a year starting in 2022 are designed for release in theaters. Mr. Hamada said, additionally, superhero films, two annually, is the goal, will arrive exclusively on HBO Max. 
the fledgling streaming service owned by Warner Media, upcoming superhero films like Batgirl and The Static Shock are used as examples of films that are likely headed to HBO Max instead of theaters, basically the non-Batman, non-Superman films that focus on characters that aren't necessarily household names. So basically, they're going to take your your B heroes, you know, your your second stream heroes and they're going to put them on HBO Max and then your Wonder Woman, your Batman, your Justice League, your Aquaman, your Shazam, your Joker, the, you know, Suicide Squad and all them, those movies are going, you know, those are going to the theaters along with the HBO Max release. So basically your 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 big names get the theater and HBO Max release and your lesser known names are just getting HBO Max period. You know, the only way this is going to work is if if they get the same production budget that big time uh, movie would get. You know, uh, along with that, are they going to have the whole access of Warner uh, Studios behind them? To make sure that, you know, these movies are, are pumped out with the best uh, quality. You know, because if they all get the, the uh, you know, the fair same shake, then you could see, okay, well, I'm watching a, a hell of a, you know, movie, good quality that I would find in a the theater. And this is Bad Girl, this is Static Shock. Yeah, I, I'll go check that out. If you're bringing in content like that, then yeah, HBO Max would be, you know, a place to go to. But if you just push this shit out and, you know, more than likely, it's always going to boil down to the script. The script is shitty, story is shitty, and you just want to give us woke adaptations of these characters, then nah, you know, you, you know, HBO Max can fuck off at that point. The good news for those with HBO Max is that there will be some properties that will come to the streaming service for the price of the subscription fee. The bad news is Warner Media is limiting the properties that could become breakout hits in theaters and limiting the growth potential of something like Batgirl. Sure, there are hits on streaming, but what if Static Shock was poised to be the new Iron Man? We'll never know if Warner Media decides to release it only on HBO Max. Well, yeah, it's like you, you can only do so much with the streaming service because the thing is, if you're not subscribed, you're not watching it. And a lot of people would do just fine not subscribing and never watching Bad Girl and never watching Static Shock. Trust me, that shit's got people are not going to lose sleep over watching, you know, those kind of movies. You know, if they have their potential to go to the theater and watch it, yeah, because they'll sit there and they'll have to, you know, spend that one cost for that one movie. But the thing is, as you know, with a subscription, you have to pay monthly. And some people are not willing to pay monthly just to watch a movie or two or maybe three. Or how many people would pay to watch HBO Max just to get just to watch superhero movies at that? You know, fuck all the other stuff. What about just the superhero movies and all the other shit that you had pulled from, what's that, the DC Universe? <sighs> Man. The thing is, you have to be, you have to show that you're worth it. People just ain't going to fucking throw money at this shit anymore. You got to, you got to prove your worth and you haven't proved shit yet. But less expensive superhero films aren't the only superhero projects heading to HBO Max. According to Hamada, fans should expect more spinoffs like the upcoming Peacemaker series that is coming to the streaming service after the Suicide Squad debuts. With every movie that we're looking at now, we're thinking, what's the potential Max spinoff, Mr. Hamada said. Wow, so they're looking, they're looking to... With everything that they put out, I guess, they're looking to turn it into something more than it just being a movie. They can get characters from it to get their own spinoffs. Everything will be HBO Max exclu exclusives. You either have to go to the theater or you'll have to watch it on HBO Max regardless. Shit. This strategy is also reasoning. This strategy is this strategy is also the reasoning behind the upcoming Gotham City Department spinoff. This strategy is also the reasoning behind the upcoming Gotham City Police Department spinoff. 
from the Batman. What's next? Perhaps a Steve Trevor prequel taking place pre-Wonder Woman? Maybe a William Dafoe spinoff about his character from Aquaman? Well, we'll have to wait and see. What we do know is that the interview claims that there are no current plans for a spinoff or sequels for Zack Snyder's highly anticipated Justice League director's cut. In fact, the report claims that the studio describes the Justice League recut as a story cul-de-sac, a street that leads nowhere. Ah, that's interesting. Well, I have a video that I'll be working on that says a little bit different about that. But that's for another video. Regardless, it appears that all this means Warner Brothers is ready to transition a lot of its superhero output to HBO Max. So if you enjoyed watching Wonder Woman 1984 from the comfort of your own home, there will be plenty more where that came from. And <laughs> yeah, not sure if uh, people want a lot more of Wonder Woman 1984, I can tell you that. But I'll be, you know, I'll be the judge of it myself here shortly. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Are y'all ready to uh, see all this uh, stuff like Batgirl and Static Shock and, you know, a lot of lesser known hero uh, movies coming out strictly for HBO Max? You think uh, they should have at least a theatrical release as well? Uh, do you even care about any of this shit at all? Y'all let me know in the comment section below. Please share, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. It's your boy, 24-7 with 24-7 Fusion Media, and I'm out. Peace.